Hello, in this video I'm going to give a brief overview of the ether functional group. Uh, at its simplest, the, the ether functional group is uh, an oxygen with two single bonds to hydrocarbon groups. And these hydrocarbon groups might be represented generically as uh, the letter R. Uh, they can be alkyl groups, they can be aryl groups, they can be saturated, unsaturated. They can have a wide range of structures. They can be the same on both sides, they can be different on both sides, but either way, uh, it is a functional group where we have hydrocarbon groups on both sides. It's very, uh, it's worth mentioning briefly the, the typical confusion that some folks have between the ether and ester functional group given the similarity of their names. The ester functional group has one carbonyl group on one side of it. Ester functional group, not an ether. Ethers are named, uh, the, the ether functional group is named as the alkoxy substituent. Just do one really quickly. Uh, So I have my cyclopentane and I have this ether substituent hanging off of it. Uh, and so this is some kind of cyclopentane. And in the box, I have an ethoxy substituent. Uh, it's important to note that for the most part, ethers do not affect the uh, suffix of the molecule uh, and they have no inherent priority when comparison to other functional groups. They are substituents only, uh, and they just get treated like any other halo or alkyl substituent. And so ultimately you would name this ethoxy cyclopentane. And, you know, just one other quick example to, to reinforce methoxy here and an ethyl here. You would name this 2-ethyl 6-methoxy heptane, when actually that would be totally bupkis uh, because you can't have 2-ethyl. So let me let me extend this chain. <clears throat> you would name this molecule, you can't have 2-ethyl anything. Go go back and, and figure out why you can't do that. 3-ethyl, uh, because ethyl is alphabetically first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, methoxy. And this is now has two more carbons on it, so it is no longer heptane, but a no-name. There's nothing special about the ether functional group. It adds no additional priority uh, to, to the numbering scheme or anything. Okay. Ethers are uh, sort of polar molecules. Um, they're not really very polar. One uh, really... Uh, interesting demonstration of the, the not very polar, polar, uh, not of the low polarity of the ether functional group is that I, here you have pentane. Let's look at their boiling point. Pentane has a boiling point of, let's see, where did I write this down? 36 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's, that's pretty low. Iethyl ether has a boiling point of 35 degrees Celsius. And yes, I, I recognize that I made this a, a subscript and let's go fix that. There we go. And so diethyl ether is actually very similar in polarity to uh, pentane. Uh, and diethyl ether is also uh, not at all soluble in water, despite the fact that ethanol uh, is and that even other similar looking esters might be. One of the most important 
uh, properties of ethers. They are relatively unreactive. The primary uh, types of reactions that are common to almost all ethers is acidic cleavage, and this requires strong concentrated acid uh, for the most part. It just doesn't, doesn't fall off when you, you know, wave weak acid around at it. So because ethers are relatively unreactive, we see them as solvents for a lot of reactions. Uh, and in particular, reactions that, that involve strong bases, things that are going to react with product compounds, um, and, and, you know, oxidizing reactions, most oxidants ignore ethers, uh, and so on. In the next couple of videos, uh, I'm going to outline, outline some ways that ethers are made, and then I'm going to cover this at acidic cleavage reaction in a couple of videos. Uh, so thank you for watching.